The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk. Tonight's guest is one of the Bronx's most popular artists, not only because he's incredibly talented, but also because more often than not, his subject matter beautifully depicts our home borough of the Bronx. Tonight we have an exclusive first look at the murals he's creating for the new library at Bronx Community College. So sit back and relax on this summer evening for a Bronx treat from a Bronx artist who is making his how many appearances? His fifth appearance on Bronx Talk, his first, was in 1996, 15 years ago. Please join me in welcoming the Bronx's own Daniel Halbin. Danny, always great to see you. We should great say to, to our, our friends and neighbors that you and I were uh, shopping at the Garden Gourmet on Broadway, and I said, hey, Dan, you got anything new? And we have just an incredible show as an outgrowth of that. First of all, how are you? I'm good. Glad to be back. <laughs> And uh, for your fifth appearance, yeah. um, tell me a little bit about the project we're going to look at. And we have many incredible paintings to show. So after you give the introduction, we're just going to go to it. What, yeah. what is this project? So uh, there's a new building being built on Bronx Community College. It's a Robert A.M. Stern building. It's a new library. It's going to be it's going to have the largest footprint on the campus there for those of you who are familiar it was once the it was once the uh, uptown branch of NYU it's on the highest elevation in the Bronx looking out over the Harlem River at University Avenue and 181st Street and uh, this was a project that was 12 years in the in the uh, organizing and I was brought on board to create all the artwork for this new library. What did they assign you to, like, what did they well, basically with, with hire you they and commission you to do? initially offered that the, in, in discussions with the architect and the, the powers that be people from the campus, they decided that there were certain areas within the building that would be appropriate to have artwork. And these are the stairwells that go up to the main what they call the information commons, the main reading room on the second floor. And uh, in each of the stairwells, there are two 12-foot uh, uh, square walls upon which will be my large paintings. Uh, each painting. 12, 12 feet. I mean, that's, that, that's so the some wall. of the things we're going to see are, of course, yeah, scoped yeah. down, so, so but the, these are huge So the, paintings. the paintings on these walls will be 5 by 10 feet and they will be up at, at a six-foot level, and you'll see them from above and from below. There'll be a, a diagram in this. And, and uh, how many paintings are there? So altogether, there are 22 paintings. Uh, can, can we just start so showing can, them? Because yeah, we, we want to get to right as many. These are, it. I don't want to oversell it. Let's let them speak for themselves. So let's put up the first one. What are we looking at? Let's get it up there. Okay, let's go. There we go. So this is, is the main reading room, the information commons. Around this room is a balcony. And the balcony runs 100 feet by 40 feet, along yep. which the base of which are freeze panels. Now this and is this is not your painting. No, that is the, the picture of uh, an the, artist, uh, another artist. Yeah, that's picture the, of the room. that's the architect's All rendition. Right. They should probably get credit for that. Uh, and so here's another view. You can see that balcony, and there's along that freeze, what they call a freeze, will be 20 paintings. On the long wall, which is 100 feet long, there'll be eight paintings. And then on the short walls, each of which have two paintings. So a total of 20 paintings that circumvent the, uh, 
or circumnavigate, whatever the word is, yes. that go, surround. Go to the, surround the entire right. reading so, area. So these are not your paintings, but an art. This uh, is art a little is, model. Got it. And the people at uh, Robert A. M. Stern should probably get credit for having created these models. All right. Here and we go. So here, these are the images. Uh, so loosely, the theme of this project is uh, the bro images let's, of let's the, get of that the Bronx. Let's get the middle of it, please. Images of the Bronx. Uh, and uh, along the long walls will be uh, on the far end rooftop scenes going down to mid-level like elevated train level down to street level and one in one uh, pa one uh, end of it will have also campus scenes and then we also are doing the waterway so this Let, is the hell's gate bridge down let, at let's the, talk about this the, how large the, is this so these all of these panels are a foot and a half high by five feet across. A foot and a half and, high by and, five and feet across. And they're painted on canvas that's mounted on uh, fiberboard, and they're going to be in, you know, set into these this freeze okay, with let's a, put a molding. Did you have any of these ready to go, or Jane? Let's well, just keep this them is up a there. great project for me because my focus, as anyone who uh, is familiar with my work knows, that I've focused on the landscape that I'm most familiar with, which happens to be encrusted with the Bronx, and so I have a, a huge inventory of images that I've created over the years of the Bronx. Can we so, put up some so, more yeah, of what these I, images? What I did uh, to create uh, many of these new panels was I uh, explored all of the paintings I had done in the past, looking for a, uh, you know, pieces of them that would work in this uh, format, this and, and, funny shape. And this shape is looking down the, the Harlem River? This is looking down the Hudson River the Hudson towards River. the... Uh, George Washington. From, in bridge. essence, from Riverdale. From Riverdale, yeah. Uh, are they intended to be, uh, and Jane, you can just keep putting them up there because there are so many I want to keep going. Are they intended to be realistic or did you make up some? Because I know yeah, sometimes you use a little well, fantasy and interpret you know, the Bronx. It's funny, when the uh, committee came to my studio this week, uh, they're kind of uh, very literal thinking people. And so they were, you know, picking out all the little idiosyncrasies of my work and all the changes that I make. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a photorealist. If someone wants an exact replica of something, I'm not the but that, guy that of course, to go to. For I'm, us, yeah. the, it's always been, yeah. for me certainly, it's been the beauty of your work. I want to see that one again. My, my objective um, in, do, in creating these pieces is that, you know, they're going to be up 12 feet high and you're going to see them at a distance. So I, I, what, what I'm concerned with as an artist is the, the clear shapes that are readable from a distance and, and simplified for, you know, arrangement of forms. And in this case, you got the double Yankee this, this Stadium This is really a moment piece. in time that we will, of course, never see again because obviously the old stadium is gone. And this is what I was saying. In other words, we know the two stadiums were there. Eh, maybe that pathway isn't exactly the way it looked, yeah. but you, you gave us a feel for what the Bronx looks yeah, like. Yeah, the, right. the, the thing that the committee was most concerned about was certain... Uh, distinctive features of the campus itself. So I, I went back and took some pictures of certain details. On, on the Bronx Community uh, College, yeah, which I, is I, a, a historic and gorgeous I, place, no question about it. Um, keep going, Jane, pop them up there. How, uh, how long did it take you to, you know, it's such a, a simple question, but how long does it take you to do one of these? Well, I mean, some of these, one yes, would think so, you would so, one for months. So again, what, what I'm doing, like in the case of this piece, which was on Southern Boulevard and Boston Road around that area. Um, I, I had done a painting on that location. Then I, I have my inventory on the computer that's digitally, uh, you know, saved and as files. And then I, I pull up my images and make a window in Photoshop that's the proportion of these panels. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, um, both me and the picture. So, um, <laughs> and... So then I, I go scanning across my own paintings to see if there are sections that, that you might were, that could, that or could you... look good on the, on this and on these panels. And then did you digitally move then those sections? Then I put them onto my flash drive, 
And then I put my flash drive in what became my first purchase when I got my first check for this commission, <laughs> which is a digital projector. Right. And then I project the image directly onto the, the canvas of the same size, the panel, and then I trace it out. And so these actually are paintings based, based on, on some other, earlier for, for the earlier most, That's what I'm that trying to express, yes. Did you make that up, or was that a, a, a process and a technique that you It's something that, that I have done in the past. Uh, you know, I have often explored or revisited. Van, Van Gogh never my, did the digital thing. Di not digital. <laughs> well, digital is just a tool. You know, I mean, they, you know, artists have used optical tools. You know, there's, you know, back they're, they're talking about Vermeer using a uh, a uh, camera Lucida or a uh, you know d various devices where the the image comes through a little pinhole and gets projected right, into right, a thing, sure. and then they they trace it out. Right. And uh, so you know. So now we have a little bit more elaborate way of doing this. Did you really directly answer my question? Uh, a day, a week, a month, oh. uh, six uh, so, weeks? On, on, uh, no, on so uh, put up another one. Let's you know, see. it's the same as any of my paintings. You know, some of them are just you pop them up there, and they and they work the first time and then uh, some of these pieces I have you know continued to work on for months but you know that I, so I started the project a year ago April so it's what about I don't know 18 months 16 mm -hmm. months I've been working on this project and I've completed uh, 18 of the 20 small panels one of the two big panels, and I've started. What, what is the, the deadline, or wh so when do they in need this to year? Uh, no, next year, it, uh, May of 2012 will be the will be the installation the of the work, and will be the ribbon cu cutting ceremony for the building. Right. And then in in the following uh, September of 2012, we'll have a, the party for me. I, I, and my my <laughs> work right now and for the, me. For, it's a party for what uh, my wife Judy keeps calling the Halbin Museum. That, well, it, it, we'll, we'll talk about the legacy <laughs> is, of it. What, you know, yeah. I did want to go back. Although, look at these images. You hate to go back. That other one about the Kingsbridge Armory um, again gives you the feel for the Bronx. So that's you know that's the thing I'm I'm trying to find uh, you know like the one we just saw a typical rooftop type of thing you know and then some more distinct distinctive uh, features of like the Kingsbridge Armory, the uh, Yankee Stadiums, the, you know, things that are, like the, the Harlem River, things that are more distinctive. Is, is this uh, anywhere in particular? Yeah, that's uh, actually on the roof of one of the Sholem Aleichem buildings here in Which our, is on our Cedric neighborhood, Avenue, yeah, yeah, between Cedric uh, and... Uh, Dan, over the years, and you, were, as I chronicled, you have been on the show for since 1996. Um, do you find that for, for you, and, and I'm not talking about me because I, as you know, have loved your work and, and we all think it's improved each time. For you, is it better than it was? And when you look at any one of these images, do you say, wow, I could never have done this years ago? Or is this, because essentially the theme, and I remember that same theme of that cat on the, that's, on the, uh, that's uh, canvas, our cat. Uh, on the, the well, balcony. You know. um, but, but is it improved or is it different for you? Yeah, it, it has to be. It has to be different and it has to always be a challenge, you know, because that's what art, that's the, you know, what's real about art. You know, I'm not a commercial artist and I, I'm not interested in, in creating a piece, uh, you know, unless uh, there's a, some, some new territory that I'm exploring. So. And certainly the technique. I mean, can we go back to that last one? I just want to uh, get a look. Is that one so where the so image is yeah, projected? Yeah, that's why I... What, so what I'm doing wow. is uh, I'm projecting not only onto a panel, but it's, uh, I'm projecting onto a panel that has wet, a wet tone on it. And what I'm doing here is when, I, when the image is shown on the surface of this toned canvas... Uh, I take a rag and wherever there's light, like the sky or the sides of the building where the sun is hitting, I take my rag and I pull off the tone that's on the canvas. So in a couple of hours, you take the projector away and you can see the entire image, the entire painting. Is 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 it's created a, in almost by the tonally. negative image. Yeah, yeah, by the negative. Well, let, let's, let's so this see is my one. special technique, 
and I've recently been offered the opportunity to possibly uh, do a workshop at the Art Students League in this very approach to realizing going from you know the idea to the realization of, of a, a final commission like this. I'm going to turn a very non-political show into a political moment and that is something we were talking about beforehand. Your ability to create that process is undoubtedly born because of the freedom you have felt as an artist to set up your canvas on a street on 161st Street or take your, the trips that you've taken overseas to just do things. That's an important thing as we look at developing young artists, mm -hmm. isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, it's, you know, you, it's helpful to have guidance, of course, certainly. You know, mm -hmm. it's helpful to have inspiration and it's helpful to have encouragement and it's helpful to have the time to allow your creative part of your being to, to, to come into uh, to fruition to its own. Because if, you, if you're never in touch with your own inner creativity, you're missing a big chunk of, right. of, of the value of life. That, as I said, that was my political <laughs> statement about what we need to do with our young people. So, now, this is obviously so, looking uh, yeah, so this, south at the um, ex Yeah, exactly. At, at so th this College. is a two-panel piece, and you'll see in the next couple of images. So the, this is the same one I was just, we were just showing that I was working on with the projection. That was the, that was the, this is the finished left panel. Of that. So so what, yeah, what's happening on the long walls, so that if you can picture the, the actual, there are actually 44 panels running around this wow. uh, length. And originally, of course, whenever you have a committee, by the time everybody puts their <laughs> input into the, into the project, they, they had me doing 44 panels. Luckily, everybody came to their senses and realized that not only would it be insane for me to try to create that many, but uh, it, it's better to have space. I mean, this is a library. It should be a, a calm right. experience. So uh, what's happening on these long walls yeah. is that in the center, there are, there's a panel, and then there's a, uh, uh, in between each one is a ventilation duct, and then there's another panel. So the, so the two middle panels on the long wall make up one image. Then there's blank panels with like a wood veneer, and then more uh, so the center panels are, are well, longer well, they'll be 10 feet long but broken up in the center let, let's let's put so, them put another one up there my sense uh knowing your art so this is the right years, panel uh two things i want to say one is i think you're and i don't know if it was intentional because you knew where it was going to be displayed my sense is your colors are stronger in these it, it seems well like it's you funny you should say that because um originally in my proposal i suggested because they gave me sort of the color scheme for this folks leave this one up for a few they minutes. gave me the color there. scheme for the for, for what else was going to be in in this library and so i i kind of told them that I would keep the, the muted sort of, uh, you know, monochromatic effect. Then as I was continuing to work on these things, color started creeping back in. And then I started realizing, well, maybe the lighting is not going to be so great. So, you wanted so to I, I started up. to intensify the you know, contrast. It, and then I started to add like high key touches of color that play through it. And then I realized like, you know, I'm just going to do my thing I'm, I'm and, only, and go I'm with only my, smiling my inspiration. Because, <laughs> I'm only smiling because you said you're not a commercial artist, but that is a very commercial sort of, of in, interpretation. Well, well, meaning that you were playing to an audience, which maybe you hadn't done in that way before. Well, it, I think it has more to do with the, with the location, you know, in that... Well, you that's know, what I mean, sure. Uh, you know, we're uh, in the same way that an illustrator, a commercial artist... Uh, basically deals with the same components in, in your work. You want to draw attention to it, but in the library, you have to sort of moderate that level of attention because here's the, so this is what the, the two panels the two look panels, like together. Yeah. And this is a uh, unfinished, obviously. You can see the area on the left that, uh, that has not been painted in yet. But uh, yeah, no, you know, the, the criteria for making art is you know that you you want to draw people's attention to it but you don't want to do it in a cheap way you know you can oh, throw all nothing. the garish colors up there and you know 
get people to look at it. I mean, you could put sparkly stuff in it, but that's not, but that's you know. Not what this is. What, the second point I wanted to make, uh, Dan, was that um, the, the integration of all the different elements that uh, in that previous one we saw, the George Washington Bridge in the background, you had, uh, I, I guess it was, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the early morning dew or the, the clouds that were there, as well as you could always see a roadway to me and viscerally, and maybe uh, some of our viewers would feel the same way, this is the Bronx. You can mm. never look at a street corner in the Bronx and say, oh, that's one image. It's just it's Yankee funny. Stadium, for example. Is always more images than you can it's, capture, and you've been able to uh, but, represent the Bronx beautifully. And yet, thank you, and yet, you know, the, with all that we have, the bombardment of images and compression of, of stuff in our environment, you know, as an artist, I what I seek is the 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 light that 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 uh, you know permeates all of this and that that make makes it that cohesive brings it that brings well, it together. You know, th this image is perfectly timed for what you just said because, of course, light is so important about what actually comes through the subway tracks and illuminates. You know, the, whether it be the umbrellas or the red and white uh, stripes, uh, and again. This also is what I was talking about. Look at all the different images, but walk down any Bronx street, that's what you're going to see. Well, I just, you know, had a, a, a young woman from Germany uh, came to visit my studio this weekend who had seen my website. And, you know, for all of the uh, characterization of the, the Bronx everywhere else in the world, um, you know, when she saw my images of the Bronx, she felt that it did what you were saying, that there's, it brings a warmth to an environment where, where you don't expect to see that. That's not, you know, what the typical, you know, stereotypical image of the Bronx is. Well, there and it is. So look look how came, that looks like. Yeah. Just to be, now, where is it? So is this, a, okay, so this is an example, a great example of artistic license because what happened was I did this, uh, had done this painting of the uh, Coquito man there on the right uh, on 174th Street looking south along Jerome Avenue. Yes. But then when I when I took the image and and it was a vertical and I tried to, st it, it started to stretch out into this funny shape that I was creating and then and then Jerome Avenue became this like broad boulevard that kind of looks like Coney Island or Coney something. Island so I, or I, I kind of I mean, went I with it. Even 14th Street <laughs> yeah. uh, so, or, or uh, even so, an area of Hunts Point so that it you look at the Hunts yeah, Point market. It literally doesn't exist but the, you know it's still trying to evoke uh, you know some for, for viewers who are saying goodness gracious i've got to own this stuff i want to see this stuff in my home that's a good, um, will good they will, look at this oh my god so goodness. that's this is a view from the burnside station looking south so i started to explore the neighborhood around uh, bronx community college uh, so this is the the closest uh, train station uh, and, uh, let, let me finish my question. View, yes. you, you brought some prints. Now, I don't know yeah. if we're going to be able to switch gears, and maybe you could turn around, Dan, and just okay. hold up these prints. Because for viewers for who want to either own a piece, uh, first of all, there's your website, right? Where yeah. they can so see it's any just, of the images. Which is just, maybe I'll just hold just them up. Just my name. Me. I'll hold them right here. The website. Look at this. Folks will recognize is this. Daniel, <laughs> DanielHauben.com. And, uh, and these these what, prints are are, are is, beautiful, right? aren't they? And these are what's called in modern uh, artistic circle lingo as gicles. Gicle just means print, actually, in in French or whatever. Um, but what it means in this case is that uh, I am actually producing. Uh, my wife, we have a forty-four inch printer, and we can produce. Uh, reproduction, high, Beautiful, high, high end, high end reproductions. reproductions of my work, as opposed uh, to certainly a so, purchasing a so, painting so would be are, expensive. Yeah, these are limited edition, you know, archival, uh, museum quality prints that won't fade. They're on high end paper. So for people who want a, a wonderful, beautiful quality uh, image of my one of my pieces and not you know, and want to pay a fraction of the uh, cost of an, an original, we can print them at various sizes. And, and still you can get the, and, the uh, beauty of, yeah, of no, the it, it Yeah, the because not only do you get my own aesthetic 
uh, you know, color scheme and, and uh, uh, you know, contribution, but my, my wife then takes it into <laughs> Photoshop and, you know, tweaks it Let, and let's, makes uh, it more Let's put up a couple beautiful. more from the Bronx yeah. Community College. Yeah, those I, are, I wanted to um, uh, make a comment about something that you said, Judy, your wife had mm -hmm. said, um, that it's like the Dan Halbin Museum. There must be a nice <laughs> feeling of, uh, you know, a kind of legacy that these will, these are going to be up there for a while, we presume. Yep, this is a permanent installation, whatever permanent means. Well, leave uh, that one. Look at that. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it was, I, I'm very gratified to have been awarded this, this uh, commission, and it's been wonderful. So these are the campus pieces. Right, leave that one that's, up there. That's the example. entrance to the uh, to the Gould Memorial Library, which was the original library on the campus. I, this I, this campus was originally uh, designed by McKim, Mead, and White in the late 18, the 1890s. It was built at the same time as Columbia University, but they never had finished the uh, the full uh, campus uh, structure, uh, and so. Now they brought in uh, Robert A. M. Stern Architects, which is known to kind of work with the original designs of. Campus. Are these posted up on your website yet? So, no, not yet. No. Nope, so we really are getting yeah, our first is, look. This is a first. You know, glimpse. I'm going to ask the worst question that I could possibly ask you. When you go through this, to me, it's almost like a crescendo, a climax mm. for all of this work that you've done in the Bronx. Now that what they're saying, what, uh, what has been said to you is, take all this stuff, this has been a painting that's been around for, a, a, you know, you yeah. probably saw this in 1996. Yeah, right. Um, we're saying, put it all together, blow it out in Bronx Community College. And so my question is, what do you do next? Have you, uh, have you exhausted what you well, will be doing in the Bronx? Uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Um, but I do, you know, I'm, I'm have kind of a rebellious nature, <laughs> so that you know, part of me is screaming to break the rules that are imposed by this kind of this particular kind of oh, project. This is, the one I think this is so. This is one of the big, big uh, paintings that's going to go in the stairwell. That's ten feet across by uh, by five feet high. Dan, um, we, we, we're uh, preciously out of time. Okay. Now, did you do this painting as well? That so one? that, yeah, that, so anyway, yeah, they're, they're, but you know, we leave, we, this is just a, a tease to entice people to come to the, uh, next to May. The, well, next May will be the ribbon cutting for the building, supposedly, theoretically, and then following September, we'll have the big party and uh, hopefully, and we're all you know, invited. We're, yeah, everybody's invited. Daniel Haubin, danielhaubin.com. Thank you so much for allowing us to give the people of the Bronx a first look right. of, of something that's going to be very, very special in our home borough at Bronx. My Community pleasure, Bronx. Gary. And uh, I hope you'll come back and show us more. Thank you. <laughs> for your sixth visit. Uh, if you have further comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, then email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com. And we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Archives of the show are available at bronxnet.org. You click Bronx Talk on the right hand at Navigation Bar. So we'll see you next Monday night and every Monday night at 9 for Bronx Talk. Thanks to producer Jane Floro, director Michael Arias, Dina, and our cast of thousands around us. And a special thanks to Dan Halbert. And uh, congratulations on, on what is just a spectacular uh, project, and it's going to really enhance our bar. And to Thank you, me. by the way. <laughs>